Turn with me, if you would, to the book of Psalms, Psalms 37, Psalms 37, and we want to look at a few passages. We won't read the entire book, but a chapter rather, but I uh, want to Look at verses 1 through 7, uh, verses 12 through 15, and we'll end up with verse 25. I will be reading from the King James Version, and you'll find these words. Fret not thyself because of evil doers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee desires, the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. <clears throat> Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. And then we'll skip down to verse 12 through 15. You'll find these words. The wicked plotteth against the just and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. The Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and the needy and to slay such as be of upright conversation. Their sword shall enter into their own heart, and their bows shall be broken. And then the last verse I want to read is verse 25, and it reads this way. I have been young, and now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed beg for bread. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come and break your word down that uh, we might be able to understand it, O oh God, and it might sink deep into our heart that we might not sin against thee. The words of my mouth, meditation of my heart, be acceptable. O oh Lord, my Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Amen. I was looking at a subject and I was thinking God is still with you. God is still with you. Let me open by stating that those of us who trust and believe God and do not lean to our own understanding, our knowledge, can declare that God is good. To the believer, regardless of good times or bad times, happy or sad, sick or well, God is still good and God is still with you. There's probably no doubt that you and I, during perilous times, have questioned God and petitioned him to, to come and see about his children. Sometimes it seems as though the wicked prosper and you and I, who are trying our best to live right, can't seem to catch a break. It may feel at times as though folk get, get a kick out of your misfortunes. The psalmist writes in Psalms 38, 16, don't let my enemies gloat over my distress. Don't let them boast about my downfall. But the prior verse in verse 15 says, but I trust in you, O Lord. 
and you, O oh Lord, my God, will answer me. Those verses are from the today's English version. I just like the way that they read. When times get tough, uh, we need to be encouraged. We like to kind of run to the Psalms because they seem uh, to touch us right at our point of need. The 37th Psalm is a familiar chapter we like to run to in, in times of trouble because it, 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 it predicts the doom of the wicked and, and the prosperity of the righteous. According to the USB commentary, and I quote, this particular psalm is classified as a wisdom poem, that is, one that teaches truths about God and humankind, the general themes of the providence of God, the punishment of the wicked, and the reward of the righteous are presented in various ways. Given the literacy theme, a literary theme, there is no orderly development of thought in the psalms so it cannot be outlined. As the theologian Weezer says, it is not so much a psalm as it is a collection of proverbs. The only fact about the author is that he is an old man. And the heading in the TEV, or today's English version, says the destiny of the wick, wicked and the good. And the Hebrew title says, a psalm of David, unquote. When we look at the news today, Lord have mercy Jesus, we see wickedness and evil of all kinds. Someone stated to me just the other day that folk are out of control. We, we call evil good and good evil. Another of my friends said the pandemic has brought about a new kind of evil. This may be true, but there are also good folk doing good things during this time. And I was looking at the verses six, uh, 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 the first six verses rather, of Psalms 37 through the lens of the NASB, and it translates it this way. Do not fret because of evildoers. Be not envious toward wrongdoers, for they will wither quickly like the grass and fade like the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and cultivate faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him and he will do it. He will bring forth your righteousness as a light and your judgment as the noonday. Sometimes, sometimes we want to rush God to, to intervene on our behalf, especially when we try to stand up for what's right and it seems like change is really not coming. Folk are still killing meaninglessly and it seems like justice is not being rendered. The rich seem to be getting richer and the expense at the expense of the poor. Hate groups seem to be on the rise. A fight breaks out because folk are not putting on a mask or maintaining social distancing. And then tempers get short. And it seems as though God gets remarkably quiet, especially when you want him to come and vindicate the situation. But God is trying to get us to walk by faith and not by sight. I think, I think the Lord somehow enjoys the times uh, when we have to depend on him, praise him, and glorify him, when it doesn't seem like he's going to show our enemies that he's on our side. And he's saying to us that my relationship with you doesn't have anything to do with how I feel about you. Mm. Uh, you have got to learn how to walk in the midst of your enemies and to give God the glory when God won't even show your enemies that you are right. You have got to trust in God that in spite of whether or not God will speak up, you will still be the child that he has called you to be. 
Because what God does is, uh, uh, is that he, he's, he's just, uh, he sees just how much you care. So, so he allows all of these things against you to escalate and still expects you to be what he wants you to be, whether or not he jumps into the fight for you at the moment that you think he should. But just when you think nothing is happening, Lord have mercy, God will give you a sign and show you that I am with you. Even if he doesn't show it to those who are against you. And you never have to worry about what folk think when you're walking with God. Because God is going to bring you out whenever he gets ready. And, and, and he is going to get the glory out of what he brings you out of. Lord have mercy. Through it all. God is still good. I made a side note, interestingly, regarding verse 4, uh, which reads in the King James Version, Delight thyself in the Lord, you know the verse, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Now, what this verse is not saying is this, is that I've heard many people say that because God is good, he will give you what you ask for. Now, now, the word delight in the Hebrew is the word anak, uh, 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 and it means to be soft or pliable, uh, pliable uh, effeminate, or, or luxurious. The word desire in Hebrew is the word meselot, and it means a request. It, it means to delight. And uh, 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 the theologians and commentary uh, uh, agree that the word render delight means to, 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 to live delicately and effeminately. To find delight or pleasure, pleasure in anything. Now, now they conclude that the meaning here is, uh, and I quote, that we should seek our happiness in God, in his being, his perfections, his friendships, and his love. The desires of thine heart literally is the askings or the request of thine heart. The fact that you seek your happiness in God will regulate your desires so that you will be inclined to ask only those things which it will be suitable for God to grant, unquote. Mm. Uh, verse 7, verse 7, the psalmist declares, rest in the Lord and, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in the way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Now, now I, I, I like the way that, that today's English version renders this text, and it puts it like this. Be patient and wait for the Lord to act. Don't be worried about those who prosper or those who succeed in their evil plans. Now, the Hebrew word here for rest is daman. And, and, and it actually means to stop, uh, uh, to hold your peace, uh, quietness, or to be silent, or just plain to wait. And now, Barnes puts it this way. The idea is that of waiting in silent patience or confidence for God to intervene, or in other words, leaving the whole matter with him without being anxious as to the results. I like that. I like that. Mm-hmm. Now, now, I believe, I believe, this is 1 Jerry 1 and 1, I believe that God wants to bring all of us to a place of trust where we are comfortable in spite of our surroundings and in spite of what's going on in our soul, our mind, or our psyche, that place between our flesh and our spirit is resting in God. Uh, I, I know the bills need to be paid, and I know that the children need to be looked after, but, but, but I have a certain rest in God, a certain trust in God, because I have a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. God and I spend time together. God and I walk together. God and I talk together. God and I visit with each other on a regular basis. There are times when everything else is moved out of the way and it's just me and my God. So I have a moment of rest. I don't feel like fighting all the time because there are times when I just have to give it to God and just rest. 
Lord, help me. You need rest. You need rest. You need rest. Turn off the TV. Turn off the radio. Get off of Facebook and Twitter. <laughs> Put down the phone, the laptop, and the newspaper. You're all messed up because the politicians can't agree on your stimulus check. You're working more and getting paid less. The barbershop and the hair salons can't even open, so your hair is all messed up. The nail salons, salons can't open, so your nails are all jacked up. The coronavirus has the country so messed up that you can't even take a good vacation. The stores are all out of toilet paper and hand uh, sanitizer. Ground beef prices are through the roof. You're walking around the house not doing anything because your mind is all messed up and your spirit is in turmoil. But you need to stop for a moment because God wants to bring you to a point of rest. Stop trying to fix things that are out of your control and, and, and stop driving yourself crazy over, over that that you can't uh, have any control about. Uh, God wants you to just rest. God is saying, just come on to me and rest. Let me handle the politicians. Let, let, let me take care of the boss. You, you just walk on your job prayerfully. Walk into the supermarket rejoicing. Walk around the house in the right spirit and rest. And remember that I am still with you. Uh, the events of recent days have caused certain uh, concern to many. From the death of over 100,000 people from COVID-19 to the planning and schemes of government officials to the senseless acts of violence and wrongful death by our law enforcement officers, officials, and vigilantes who would cause many to say, where is God? And why is God allowing this to happen? Verse, 20, uh, verse 12 through 15 of chapter 37 brings some assurance that God still sees and, and, and he will execute judgment. I have learned in my time on this earth that my timing cannot be compared to the timing of God. Uh, verse 12 through 15 says, and this is in the NASV, uh, NASU, the wicked plots against the righteous and gnashes at uh, him with his teeth. The Lord laughs at him, for he sees his day is coming. The wicked have drawn the sword and bent their bow to cast down the afflicted and the needy to slay those who are upright in conduct. Their word will enter their own heart and their bows will be broken. So since my timing it's not like God's timing. I find myself saying, God, you know I love you. And you know I trust in you, Lord. When will you fix these things? Then the scripture in Ecclesiastes 3 and 1 came to me. And it says, in everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heavens. So now, it is important that we are on God's time schedule, and it is crucial that we learn how to walk with God, how to walk in the will of God. There are times when God will give you things, but uh, along with what, he's ask, what you're asking him for, trouble will follow seemingly right behind it. So the safest place for me to be is in the will of God. I remember complaining to God and saying, God, uh, why can't you fix it now? Why, why can't you fix it like I want you to fix it? And the Lord spoke to my spirit and said, you know, your problem is that you don't trust me. And I said, now, wait a minute now, God, wait a minute. What do you, what do you mean I don't trust you? And he said, do you believe that I'm able to have to save somebody? And I said, well, yes, Lord, you know I do, so that must mean that I trust you. He said, no, that ain't what I'm talking about. Do you believe that I'm able to heal somebody? 
I said, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. And he said, that, well, what I really want to know is, do you trust me with your life? You see, when it comes down to you, do, do, do you think that I know what I'm doing? When it comes down to you, because you're trying to figure it out from point A to point B, and from point B to point C. But when you can learn to depend on me and trust me, and that I'm able to do what I said I would, then and only then are you able to trust me. God is still good, and God takes care of us. One can conclude, then, by reading this particular book, that God is righteous, and, and God is good, and God will take care of you. The fact that David was a young was young and now old. The fact that I was once young and now old. The fact that anyone who has passed from, from young age to, to an old age can only conclude that God has been merciful and God has been with you all the time. David states in the first part of verse 25, I have been young and now I'm old. I have been young reminds me of the time of joys, uh, the hopes and the friends. And God has been good to me and brought me from a mighty long ways. God has been with me through my ups and through my downs. I, I grew up in the 50s and, and the 60s during the time of segregation. And we lived in what was then called the colored section of town. Our, our neighborhood was small, but we all knew where each other lived and we knew personally pretty much everybody in town. Uh, some families were farmers, so they lived farther out. And my father was a barber, and he owned his own shop. So I had an opportunity to see a lot of my friends. Um, we went to church, and, and we were taught to say, yes, ma'am, and, and no, ma'am, and yes, sir, and no, sir, and, and to be a gentleman and always open the door, especially for the women and the young ladies. Um, we were taught to respect our elders. At night, we would play under the street lights in front of the house, and a lot of the toys we had, we made. We found ways to make some spending money by cutting grass and running errands, and it was a simple time in life for children, but God was with us all of the time. He was with me all of the time because he kept me from all hurt, harm, and from all danger. As I approached my 18th birthday, we had uh, integrated our schools, and the war in Vietnam had reached its pinnacle, and a lot of us had registered for the draft. As I entered college, uh, the thought of having to go to war loomed over me. However, by the time the war ended, I had not been drafted. God was good to my friends, and he watched over my friends, and after the war and he brought them back home safely. Uh, when I left college and I moved to New Jersey, I, I was able to retire after 34 years with state government, and God blessed me with an awesome wife and four children and eight grandchildren and three great-grandchildren. God has kept us, and he has been good to us. During my middle years, I, I, I learned a lot. Uh, God showed me a lot, and, and I made a lot of mistakes, and, uh, and I learned from them. Uh, I shared some of the life lessons with those seeking advice. And through it all, God kept me because God was good to me. Yeah. Now I'm old, or should I say I'm a senior citizen, and, and I have lived a good life. Uh, I try to live so God can use me uh, for the benefit of others and for his glory. Uh, I have a reasonable portion, as the older folk would say, uh, of my health and my strength, and, and God is still blessing me and showing me favor because God has been good to me and he's been watching over me. Uh, so now the last part of this verse as I close. Um, uh, says, yet have I seen, not seen the righteous forsaken, uh, nor his seed begging for bread. Uh, the word righteous here is from the uh, Hebrew word sadiq, and, and it means lawful. It means good. King James translates it as a rightful man. Um, 
The word forsaken from the Hebrew here is uh, asab, and it means to loosen, uh, yes, 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 to abandon uh, or to leave behind, be left over or uh, to let go. So what David is really saying here is, in, uh, in, in, in Psalms 37, 25, uh, I am an old man now, <laughs> Lord have mercy. I have been, I have lived a long time, but I have never seen a good man abandoned by the Lord uh, or his children begging for food. Uh, Lord have mercy. Uh, what David is not saying is, uh, I've never been hungry and I've never needed some food. Uh, we've all been there at some point. Uh, what David is not saying is, uh, I've never had to borrow a few dollars until my paycheck came. Oh, Lord have mercy. Uh, what David is not saying is, uh, I've never had to ask anybody for any help because we have all needed help at some point in our lives. Uh, but what David is saying is, uh, there's never, oh, have mercy, there's never been a time in my life when God didn't care about me. God is still watching over us. I don't know about you, but there's been a lot of things in my life, and I've seen a lot of things in my life, but there's one thing, Reverend, that I've never seen. I remember watching Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech on TV, and that was very moving, but there's one thing that I've never seen. I remember watching on TV the first moon landing, and I thought that that was a great thing, but there's still one thing that I've never seen. I've been to Barbados, the island of paradise to many, and I swam in the pristine blue waters, but there's still one thing that I've never seen. I've been to Lookout Mountain in Tennessee, and I saw seven states from the top of the mountain, but there's still one thing that I've never seen. I've been to Disney World. I shook hands with Mickey Mouse, and I kissed Minnie on the cheek, but there's one thing that I've never seen. I've lived long enough to see this country elect its first African-American president, but there's still one thing that I've never seen. I've never, I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging for bread because God has been good to me. God has watched over me and as I love the fact that he's watching over me and I love him so much it's I trust in him it's it is so sweet the songwriter wrote the song you know the song let me just finish with this here he says it is so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word just to rest upon his promise just to know that said Thus said the Lord, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him. I proved him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Now, here's the last, oh, Lord, I get happy, Reverend. <laughs> I get happy when I think about it. I'm so glad ah, I learned to trust him. Ah, the precious Jesus, Savior, friend, and I know that thou art with me, wilt be with me to the end. Jesus, Jesus, oh, I trust him. How I proved him o'er oh, and o'er. Oh. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Father, thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, for watching over me. All of these years, oh, there was times I didn't think I was going to make it. There was times that people wrote me off. But you never gave up on me. You was always there. And I thank you, Lord, for bringing me, as David said, from a young age to an older age. I thank you, Lord. I praise you, and I give you glory. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. This time, I'm going to call 
our pastor to come and extend the invitation to Christian discipleship. You have heard this morning the unadulterated word of God. You too can have a personal relationship with the living God. If you desire to uh, find this relationship and really don't know how, uh, why don't you call the church office? Uh, we'll be glad to help you walk through the process. And it's, it's very simple. You know what I'm going to say. Just agree with God. That, 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 he, that he is the answer and the only answer to the same problem. If you're not in this, in the Lumberton area, and uh, you still want to find a personal relationship with, call us. Uh, we'll find out where you are. Uh, we'll connect with a fellowship, a gospel preaching church, and help you to get into a personal relationship to God. Uh, this is the most important thing and the most important decision you will ever make in your life. I hope you call us. I'll be listening for your call. God bless you. brothers and sisters. I want to bring you just a few uh, quick announcements uh, as we move into the month of June. Uh, first announcement, uh, very exciting uh, development for those who are a part of the Sunday School Ministry and others who would like to become a part of it. Uh, beginning with the first Sunday in June, we will begin a new Sunday School unit, the summer unit of uh, Sunday Bible study. And for that, we are expanding our format. So we'd like for you to uh, stay uh, in touch with your deacons, uh, your Sunday school teachers. We're moving to a different format, which is going to afford us an opportunity on uh, this coming first Sunday to have a general session and then move into in, uh, the breakout rooms through Zoom, uh, different Sunday school class based on the uh, previous Sunday school uh, 
structure and classes that we have. So uh, looking forward to having you join us. There will be uh, some uh, more information uh, given by way of email uh, coming from your deacons, coming from your Sunday school teachers, uh, so that you may know how you can be involved in Sunday Bible study and participate in fellowship. So we look forward to that. Second announcement uh, for the young people who are excited as you anticipate the formal conclusion of school. Uh, and so uh, Deacon Hickman, myself, and others who are part of the Next Gen team have been working together, uh, ideating and dreaming about how on the campus of the Southside Church here at 673 Ayerstown Road, we can engineer a fun but socially distant and appropriate experience for you to have some fun and celebrate finishing a historic spring semester for 2020. Nobody in the, in the history of the 21st century has had a spring semester like this one, and we want to celebrate you getting through it. And so uh, keep your ears uh, open, keep your eyes open uh, to uh, get the information on how we're going to celebrate you and celebrate the end of this semester. Just want to say to each of you, uh, especially in the wake of this past uh, week's uh, events, several past couple weeks of events, to stay safe, uh, to keep peace, operate in love, and uh, do not react or retaliate. Um, uh, God loves you, uh, and, uh, and in the midst of it all, we're going to continue to walk together in fellowship. So we'll do it through Zoom, and we look to see you there. God bless you, and have a great week. Good morning, Saints. Uh, just keeping you informed. Uh, just a reminder, uh, first of all, that this coming Lord's Day, uh, June the 7th, uh, is the first Sunday. So uh, <coughs> we will uh, again continue our worship uh, as we have been doing for the last uh, several months. We encourage you to have your uh, juice and your crackers or whatever you use for the Lord's Supper. Uh, we will again share with you as we worship and fellowship together around the Lord's table. I also just want you to know that uh, we here have been working diligently in anticipation and preparation uh, for that day <clears throat> when we shall be able to gather again in the Lord's house to worship and to fellowship together. Let me remind you, uh, we are careful uh, to in our planning to make sure that we will not, we will not do this until all of the pieces of the puzzles are in place and we know that it is safe uh, for us to gather uh, together uh, and fellowship and worship. Uh, we will be giving you additional information. I just want you to know uh, that this morning uh, some disinfectant has arrived. Uh, the machine is on its way. Uh, we are making plans and we're doing everything that is possible can to make to assure your safety when you gather back in the house of the Lord. I, I'm excited. I look forward to the day uh, when we shall be able to do this again. In the meantime, you be safe, uh, be blessed, keep the peace, uh, do good to somebody else, and continue to praise the Lord and wait on him, as the preacher said this morning. Praise the Lord. Uh, God is in control and he got this. Amen and amen. Some lonesome grave, but you told 